using school counselors at, at all levels of schools, and w with these counselors being focused not on academics and, and, and not on other <laughs> types of programs, but being focused solely on intervention into the type of behavior uh, that could lead to either a school shooting or other conduct by a student that, that could harm another. Governor Greg Abbott will host the third day of talking today about school safety. One of those traveling to Austin this week on that issue, Dallas ISD Superintendent Michael Inahosa. Um, and you came out of this, this meeting, uh, one of the three days of meetings, fairly encouraged by some of the proposals. I was pleasantly surprised. I went in very skeptical. I thought it was they were going to try to convince us of their ideas, but actually they listened to us, and I, I learned from the other people in the room. Um, first up, one of the simple, easy solutions, according to an awful lot of people, is just hand the teachers a gun and train them how to use it. Do uh, you think that's ever going to happen in Dallas or large school districts? That'll never happen in Dallas. I won't recommend that. If I did, my board wouldn't approve it. However, if you work in a small district that's 500 miles away from law enforcement, it might be appropriate in far west Texas. But I was worried they were going to try to push us in that direction, but they said, oh, no, that's permissive. The Marshall program, if a district wants to use it, I don't ever see it happening in Dallas. Uh, another fix proposed by uh, President Trump and others is something called hardening the schools. Now, I look at a couple of your campuses. You've got portable buildings. You've got athletic fields. You've got acres of land. You've got kids who are off campus for school lunch and then come back on, after, uh, come back on campus after lunch. And they're talking about basically making a school campus like an airport as far as safety. That's not reasonable. Well, one of our high, one of our high schools has 37 entrances. Mm -hmm. uh, our schools were built long ago when we could ride our bicycle to school. And we were afraid of a Russian invasion, not right. of our own people. So while that we, we do need to develop some safety measures, such as safety vestibules where everybody comes in and out through the main area, but that's impractical to make it completely hard like a prison. Um, you have uh, the uh, one of those. Um, traveling to, uh, you know, at this meeting in Austin, they basically they kicked the cameras out. And you said that was a good idea. The, we, we saw the governor's statements, which came either at the beginning or the end when cameras were allowed in. Uh, but there was a free exchange of ideas in the interim. Absolutely. And I was very pleasantly surprised that we were allowed to speak. Mm -hmm. It was a bipartisan group. It wasn't just one party. It wasn't just people with one worldview. We had law enforcement and superintendents. And we were able to get our opinions out there freely. You've gone down there every year to, to lobby on certain issues, usually involving money. And the answer that you usually get from the legislative leaders is, we got no money. This year, you heard something different. We've always been told we have no money. And why are we down there whining about it? Today, this was a little different. They said, Texas is a rich state. This is a big issue. Safety of our kids is most important. And if there, there may be some opportunities to put some resources to make schools more safe. And so we'll certainly be available to try to contribute to that. You, you don't have enough school counselors as it is. And yet now there are some calls for, well, let the school counselors screen these kids and, and see if they are really a threat. And if they are, we get the mental health counseling. There isn't money for the counselors. There hasn't been money for mental health counseling. We haven't been able to give our employees, our counselors, a raise for three years, much less add any more counselors. So they'll have to free up some resources. However, one idea that did come up that resonated with me was behavior threat assessment teams. If we can train our current staff to identify behavior that could become a threat, like the Secret Service does, mm -hmm. that would be helpful and that wouldn't require new staff. It'd be training existing staff on how to identify those behaviors. And your staff's going to say to you, right in my spare time, I'm, I'm going to be doing mental health counseling and I'm also going to be monitoring social media of, of a thousand kids? Yeah, it's an additional responsibility, but we're in a new day and age now. When this thing's not getting better, we got to find some new solutions. So we're willing to do whatever. We want to be team players and try to get a solution. All right. An optimistic viewpoint. It's good to hear. Yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't come out of Austin very often. No, I've, I was pleasantly surprised uh, that at the dialogue and the process in which it, it occurred. And you're days away from the end of another school year. Very close. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> that Jim. close. Thanks so much.